What's going on, everybody? Crazy Dog, back with my Browns Steelers Week 3 Thursday Night Football Preview as my 1-1 one one Cleveland Browns are at the dog pound for the second straight week, coming off that heartbreaking 31-30 loss to the New York Jets in a game where the Browns were winning 30-17 with less than two minutes to go. And, of course, the Jets would go down and score 14 points in the span of a minute and 30 seconds. And, of course, the Browns did have a chance to go down and win that game at the end. But, unfortunately, we just could not get close enough for Cade York as Jacoby Brissett would throw a bad interception with, like, six seconds left, and that would be game. So, now you got short week, and you're welcoming Mitch Trubisky and the 1-1 one one Pittsburgh Steelers to town. And much like the Browns, the Steelers are coming off a pretty uh, bad loss, too. They lost 17-14 to the Patriots. And looking at the Steelers as a whole, it's pretty clear. They're being carried by their defense, whereas the Browns right now are kind of being carried by our offense. Now, before I really get into this game, I got some Browns news to talk about. First off, I uh, got some injury news, as according to Jake Trotter from earlier, and I quote, Now the Browns have placed both tight end Jesse James, yes, Steeler fans, he's on the Browns now, bet you didn't know that, and defensive end Chase Winovich, who's honestly been kind of a bum to start off his Browns career. Of course, he's a former Patriot. We traded Mac Wilson for him. But yeah, Jesse James and Chase Winovich are on the IR. I know Jake Trotter didn't originally put on the IR in this tweet, but he did follow it up with his uh with on the IR because he forgot to post it in his tweets to uh he's trying too quickly to get the news out. That's the thing with a lot of these reporters. You know, they're so focused on uh, getting the scoop that they forget an important detail. But yeah, as he says in the tweet here, they're both out at least four games. Lovely. Now another thing that I saw on Twitter earlier this actually got me in it. NFL linebacker grading for PFF from Jack Duffin. Number one, Jeremiah Awusu Oromoa. My draft crush. Yes, sir. Number two, Anthony Walker. Impressive. Number 77, Jacob Phillips. Out of 82 linebackers. Damn. That's tough. And then. Jack puts at the bottom. How about Brown stop rotating Phillips in? Well, you don't rotate him in that often. You know? I mean, honestly, I'd rather see Fields out there than Phillips right now. Maybe relegate Phillips to special teams until he gets it right. You know, or don't put him in there in big situations. It's pretty much the same thing with like Eli Morgan on the Guardians. You know? You can use him, but just don't have him out there in big situations. You know? But, uh, yeah, that's good to see with JOK and Anthony Walker. Two really good players on this defense. Now, a lot of people have been criticizing, you know, Kevin Stefanski, especially from this past game. But you know what really gets me? Look at this freaking chart. Notice anything with the Browns? Hmm? Look where they are. Top right, meaning strong pass. Strong run game. Now you may be wondering, where are the Steelers at? Bottom left. Weak passing attack, weak rushing attack. So, pretty much, the Browns should be able to stop them, right? We should be able to dominate. Obviously, if you think that, you haven't been watching. Because with the way our defense is played, I just expect Mitch Trubisky to just go out there and shred this defense. And Najee Harris is going to have like 100 plus yards rushing. Because of course he would. Even with a bad offensive line, that's something that would happen with this Browns team. Now, if you ask me, this game could go one of either two ways. The first is defense goes out there and eats. Offense continues what they've been doing. You know, running the ball effectively. You know, Amari Cooper is getting involved again. By the way, great game out of Amari last week. Definitely a good start for him. You know, uh, was it nine receptions, 109 yards, and a touchdown? Good stuff. Good home debut for Amari. I expect a lot better out of him, too, especially when Deshaun comes back. He's going to go off. 
when number four is back out on the field for the Browns. And our offense continues to just, just go crazy. Now, the second thing that could happen here, defense continues to suck. Offense loses its swagger and they just lay a dud. Mm -hmm. Yep. That seems like something that would happen. With all the stuff being said on social media right now, you see players talking on social media, you know, fans are throwing the blame everywhere. This seems like a game where social media would come back to hurt this team. You know, the vibes are just messed up right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Browns just went out there and laid it dud. I really wouldn't. Now you look at the injury report for this game. And, of course, for the Steelers, there's only one name. And that's uh, Devin Bush. And he was a full participant in practice today. Now for the Browns, there's some names on there that has me concerned. Of course, we have Jesse James and Chase Winovich. They're on IR now. Miles um, Garrett, neck injury. Didn't practice today. I swear to God, if he does not play in this game, we are cooked. Especially if our secondary can't cover anybody again. Uh, Joel Batonio was a DNP for the last uh, two days with a bicep injury. Harrison Bryant was limited today. Clowney, of course, has already been ruled out for the game, which sucks. Conklin's limited. Hopefully he'll be back. He's still coming back from that knee injury last year in that Ravens game. Uh, Hubbard limited. Isaiah Thomas, he's been a full participant. The last two practices uh, had a hand injury he suffered during the preseason. But I think he'll be able to go this week, which would be huge for us. But yeah, I mean, of course, the Browns have a ton of injuries. No surprise, you know. New Year, same old Browns when it comes to that stuff. But yeah, the Browns just need to go out here and take care of business. No doubt about it. Now you look at my three keys to a Browns victory. Key number one, communicate on defense. That's the biggest one. Mm hmm. I think this is the first time I've had a different key to victory in a while. It's usually been the same stuff. You know, establish the run game, force turnovers, and uh, take advantage of those turnovers and take care of the ball. But I had to add communicate on defense and open your mouth. You know, if you're the green dot, open your mouth or whatever. Make sure everyone knows the deal when it comes to the scheme that you're running right there, that play. So you don't have any freaking blown coverages again. Especially against Claypool and Deontay Johnson. You know, because there would be so Browns to give up a deep ball to freaking Claypool. Or someone like that. You know, it would be so Browns. Number two, establish the run, take care of the ball. You already know. I mean, the Browns have been so good at that lately. They need to continue to do that. Establish the run with Hunt and Chubb. Maybe even a little Jerome Ford wouldn't hurt. You know, give them guys a break a little bit. I honestly want to see uh, Hunt and Chubb on the field at the same time. I don't think we saw that last week, which was kind of a shocker, considering that people like that. You know? It's like, you like that, but well, you're not going to see it again. So stop liking it. <laughs> Get used to it. And, of course, take care of the ball. And then on the other side, force turnovers and capitalize off those turnovers. You already know. You know, that's a big thing. Got to force turnovers, and uh, hopefully our defense can put our offense in position to score a ton of points, and hopefully we don't choke again. My player to watch, or should I say my players to watch, I put the whole damn secondary. I need to see how they respond after last week. You know, if we see another bad game out of them, well, damn, we are screwed. That's all I'm going to say. And as for my prediction for this game, I got the Browns winning 27-21. And I predict at least one blown coverage by our secondary. Because, of course, I mean, we've had a blown coverage in every game. You know, it, it would make no sense not to predict one, right? I'm going to predict at least one blown coverage, and people are going to get super pissed on Twitter, <laughs> of course. Yep. But I got the Browns winning 27-21. We go to 2-1 and one on the season. And, of course, we got the Falcons in, like, what, 10 days after that? So be a good chance to go 3-1 uh, and one. now. To be fair, I did actually think the Browns were going to go 3-1 and one in this first four-game stretch, but I didn't expect us to lose to the Jets. 
Now let's see if the Browns can bounce back and get it back in the win column and make Browns fans on Twitter happy. Because I'll tell you one thing, Browns Twitter after a victory is way, way better than after a loss. I mean, after a loss, I don't even want to be on Twitter. Browns fans can be very insufferable after a loss. Because they're out here blaming everybody. I bet you there's even people out there blaming the janitors or the groundskeepers or the freaking ushers. Well, I'm, I'm sure there's even Browns fans blaming that one fan that sat like five rows up. You know, I ain't playing that guy. <laughs> I blame Mother Nature. I blame the goalposts. I blame the stadium itself. Blame Cade York for missing that extra point. When really, all the blame should go to the guys that gave up 17 points in the fourth quarter for the second straight game. Yeah, defense, you gotta be better. You have to be, especially if Miles, if Miles Garrett's out for this game. Oh my God. We're gonna have like no pass rush and Mitch Trubisky's gonna carve us up. I already know. I already know. You know? Now people probably like, okay, crazy dog. You know you're gonna beat the Steelers. It's simple. Establish the run, you know? Get Chubb and Hunt going. Maybe a little bit of Jerome Ford. That'd be nice. You know, uh, get the tight ends involved. Get Amari involved. Maybe we see a little bit of Schwartz. That'd be cool. Maybe we even see Michael Woods. I'd love to see what he can do. Maybe we see David Bell finally get in the end zone. That'd be cool, too, in his third career game as a Brown. But I don't know what to expect from our defense, honestly. I'd love to see us force some turnovers, you know, and uh, put our offense in good field position to just keep adding on. You know, not too often the Browns score 30 points and lose. <laughs> you know? But again, it's not too often that we had a 13-point lead and then we blow it in like a minute and 30 seconds. Yep. I would have loved to have been a fly on that wall during those defensive uh, meetings, especially for the secondary. Oh, my God. I can only imagine what the mood was like in that meeting room. I'm pretty sure you could have probably heard crickets. You could probably hear someone thinking there. You could probably hear the air conditioner unit. If someone sneezed, you'd be able to hear it from across the room. You could hear a pin drop in that place, I bet. In the whole building. I would have hated to have been on the offense and just watched the defense blow it. You know, thank God Miles Garrett didn't become the franchise sack leader in that game because that would have been soiled so hard. Man, it's like when that means everyone would have thought about that game, but like, oh, damn, the Browns lost that game. You know? We'll see if Miles even plays this week with that neck injury. Wouldn't be surprised if he didn't. Because, of course, if he doesn't play, you have 10 days or so to get ready for the Falcons. So he'd have uh, a lot of time to recover and hopefully be ready for Atlanta. But um, we'll see what happens in this game. I hope the Browns can go out and get a win. Just for my sake, you know, and Brown Span's sanity, pretty much. But yeah, shout out to the Dog Pound. Shout out to any Steeler fans out there. Shout out to my guy, Mac Main, Renegade. I don't know where he's been. Um, Steel Jedi, I guess. Just like so many freaking Steelers fans. <laughs> Oh, man, shout out to uh, the dude formerly known as Steel Maiden, now Steel Sermon. Hope all is well with you, my guy. Shout out to Steel Jackson and all the other Steelers fans. The cool ones, anyways. You know, and um, see what happens. Should be a good game, though. But with that being said, I'm Crazy Dog. Let's go, Browns. To get this W, man. Just for my, for my sanity, for Browns fans, sanity everywhere. Just for our sake. Just get a win. You know, I would love a comfortable win by like two touchdowns, you know, no problem. You know, it, I, I just want it to be where it's like two minutes to go in the game and I'm just sitting back here during my stream like, well, two and one. Let's get it. On to Atlanta, right? <laughs> but knowing this team, it's not going to be that easy. I wouldn't be shocked if we had to rely on Cade York again. I don't know. I just want a good game out of the team. That's all I want. You know, I want to play mistake-free football for 60 minutes. 
while our defense terrorizes the Steelers. You know? I would love that. You know, if our offense plays a great game, you know, Hooper has another 100-plus yards, maybe a couple touchdowns. Chubb is eaten like a madman. Kareem Hunt's hurdling people, you know. Meanwhile, on the defensive side, we have like three turnovers. You know, Denzel Ward is locking down Deontay Johnson. Greg Newsom's got freaking Chase Claypool in freaking prison. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alex Wright and Isaiah Thomas are just beating up on uh, Mitch Trubisky. Or if Miles Garrett plays, then he's going to absolutely wreak havoc. But who knows these days with this team. But I'll see you guys later. I'm Crazy Dog. Let's go Browns. And I'm out.